Welcome to Little Craft Nest. You may have noticed that Cricut Design Space looks a little different. Cricut is slowly rolling out some new updates, so we are going to go through all of those. And if your design space it doesn't look different, it may be because that your design space hasn't uploaded yet, but if you want to be able to use the new version, what you can do is go in Cricut Design Space and go up to the menu, go over to Settings, and then change your application experience from live to beta. And then you'll be able to see all the new changes. So our layers panel over here in design space got a bit of a makeover. The first thing you'll notice are the tabs here on the top. It no longer says group, ungroup, duplicate, and delete. Instead, we have these three icons here. So our trash can here is obviously delete. And if you hover your mouse over each of the icons, they'll tell you what they are. This middle one here is duplicate and the one on the left is group. So I have two layers selected here. If I want to group those together, I just have to click on this left button here. And then if I want to ungroup them, I would just hit that button once again. So that piece is fairly straightforward and not a whole lot of guesswork there. One thing I absolutely love about this new update is that you can now name your different layers. So right now I kind of constructed a little bit of a house using different shapes. So if I wanted to, I could click on this shape right here and we're going to double click on that and I'm going to rename it chimney. And then I can click on the triangle and we can call it roof. And you can do that with all your layers. Now let's say I selected everything here and I group this together. Now I could name this whole group of shapes as well. So if I double click on group, we can call it house. And let's go ahead and change the name of these ones as well. So my pink rectangle, this is going to be door. And our bottom square here, let's just call it main. And now our layers look so nice and neat and organized and it's going to be so much easier to remember what layer is what, especially if you have duplicate shapes. For example, if you want to add some windows to your house, we can get some squares and we put one here. And if we were to duplicate that window, now we have two squares that look the same. And it's hard when we go into the layers panel to know which square is what. So we could name one left square and one right or window one and window two and that's going to make things a whole lot easier. And then something else we can now do is we can take our layers and move them around. So if I wanted to group window one in with the rest of the house, I can simply take it and drag it over here. And then we can do the same with window two and now those shapes are in the same group as the rest of the house, which is super cool. And that means we can also change what layer is on the top and what layer is on the bottom. So if I grab my door and I moved it below our main square, it looks like it disappeared, but really that layer is just behind the house. So if we grab it again, we can bring it back up and there's our door again. Now that's going to come in handy with a lot of the other features that we're going to be discussing today. So let's now go to the bottom of our layers panel and you'll notice that the word weld is missing, but we do have a new word here and it says combine. It's grayed out right now. I can't press it because I don't have anything selected. So let's go select something. And I actually want to quickly ungroup my house layer here. And I'm going to pull down the roof of my house to touch that square and let's have this chimney overlap the roof. So now I'm going to select all these shapes here and we're going to click on combine and you'll see the word weld is still right here at the top. So if we click on that, it's going to do the same thing as it's always done. It's going to combine all those layers into one layer. So if we look on the layers panel at the top, we now only have one shape instead of, I think I had six shapes there. And if we were to get our Cricut machine to cut this out, it would just cut around this whole image rather than cutting out individual shapes. The issue that most of us had with weld is that once you weld something and you saved your project, you could not unweld that. 
but Cricut has fixed that and I am super excited. So right now, the only way to undo this weld is to press it back because I haven't saved it yet. I'm still able to press it back and unweld this. Now let's select all these shapes again and let's click on combine and you'll see four new functions here. So this top one says unite and we're going to click on that and on our canvas, you'll notice it did the same thing as well. It combined everything and it looks like we have one shape now. But if you look over at the layers panel, it'll show our house at the top here. And then it's going to show all our individual layers below it that made up that house. So these layers aren't gone, they're just hidden away from sight. But if we were to go over to make it, it's not going to cut out all these individual shapes, it's going to cut around our whole image, which is amazing. But what's even better is if we click on combine again, we can click on undo unite and all our shapes are back here again and we can move them around once again. Now I wanna show you another cool thing about Unite. So let's go ahead and combine everything once again. Go back to combine and press Unite. So everything is grouped as one shape and on my canvas I can only move it as a whole. But if I go over to the layers panel and let's click on the roof, I can adjust the roof and change the size of that. Now when I let go, it automatically welds to the rest of the image. And I can't move that again, so I'm going to have to go back to the layers panel. We're going to click on roof and I can reposition that roof. Let's say I wanted it lower like this. And as soon as I let go of my mouse, everything's welded together again. And that is super cool. It makes it so much easier to move things around. And you can see instantly what something's going to look like. So let's move on to subtract. What subtract does is take away everything except the bottom selected layer. So if we select our house here again, you can see the bottom layer of the four pieces selected is our main square. So that means we're going to keep this square, all these other shapes will disappear, and anything touching or on top of the square will cut out of it. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we click on combine, and then we're going to click subtract. And as you can see, we are just left with our main square here, and we also have the door that cut out of it, and all our other shapes are gone. And if we look at the layers panel, you can see all the other shapes that we did have. They are still all labeled. So if you want to recall them back, you can easily do that. So if we were to go down to combine, we can simply click undo subtract. And we have our image there again. And just like before, we can still move our pieces around after we have combined them. So if we go back to subtract again, and let's say you didn't like where this cut opening is and you want to move it, we can select that door over here in our layers panel and we can just move that over and then the door has been moved and you don't need to do anything else. Let's try another example with this heart and the word love. And let's say you wanted the word love sliced out of the heart. So we're going to place the word love here. We're going to kind of have it overlap the edges for the fun of it. And this is what we used to have to do if we wanted to slice the word love out of a heart. We would select both images, we would go down to the bottom right and click slice, and then we would remove all these extra layers that we have. And then we'd be left with our sliced image and we go and delete all of these. So let's go back and show you a much faster way to do this. So now if we want to slice this same word love out of the heart, all we have to do is select both those layers, go to combine, click on subtract, and we have it sliced out super, super quickly. And also before when we slice something, that was permanent. But now all we have to do is go down to combine again and do undo subtract and everything is as it was. So I feel I'm going to be using this function a whole lot because it's super quick. And if you make a mistake, you can easily undo it. All right, now we're going to explore the next function, which is 
intersect. And what this is going to do is delete everything that isn't overlapping. So I have selected two hearts here, and if I click intersect, we are now just left with this shape here because this is the only area that was overlapping. So let's go ahead and undo this. Now let's say you want to bring a third image into this. So we have a third heart here. Now if we selected the three hearts like this and clicked on combine and press intersect, we wouldn't be able to do this because all three of the objects selected need to be overlapping. And you'll end up getting this warning up at the top. So let's undo this. And now if we grab this third heart here, we're going to put it right in the middle. And let's select all three hearts, combine, intersect. And we're left with this shape here because this is the only area that all three shapes were touching. So let's look at another fun way to use this function. I have this beautiful floral design here, but what if I wanted my heart to look like this floral design? We're going to put the heart right on top of our design here, and we're going to have them completely touching each other. Now we're going to select both the flower design and the heart, and we can go down to combine and press intersect. And now we're left with this super cool looking heart. I feel like this is going to be such a fun function to use. Again, it's similar to slicing an image, but you can do it so much faster with just the click of a button. And once again, if you didn't like the position of where the florals were on the heart, we can just click on our heart and we can move that over or down. And then we're going let go and then we've slightly changed the design on our heart again. Now, instead of using intersect for this project, what we could do is put our floral in front of our heart. So we go over to the layers panel and move the floral pattern above the heart. And now we're going to select both those layers, go to combine and press subtract instead of intersect. And we've just ended up with a whole different design. So the last design was the positive space of the floral image, and in this one, we're using the negative space, so we got a different look again. So it's super fun to play around with these functions and to see what looks best for the project you're trying to create. Now we have one more function that we're going to test out, and that is exclude. So I'm just going to grab a few more hearts once again, and we're going to overlap these hearts and select all three of them. So now if we go down to combine, you'll see exclude at the bottom. Now this one's a little more tricky to understand. It's similar to subtract where it does remove pieces of your image. But with subtract, we're only removing pieces from the bottom layer. With exclude, everything is kind of slicing out of each other. So let's click on exclude and you can see what happened. We're kind of getting a fun little design going around. And again, if we go over to the layers panel and we click on one of those hearts and you want to move that because you don't like where it is, we can do that. And we got a different design. Now let's undo this and add a few more hearts and see what happens. All right, so I got a whole pile of hearts here. Let's select them all. We'll go to combine and exclude. And this looks super fun. You can really come up with some great designs doing this, but it'll probably take a little bit of playing around. So this function will cut out some of the pieces and then it keeps some, but you're going to see the outline of every single shape that we have. So if you look closely, you can still see all six of our hearts. So I'm sure you can come up with some really neat designs and patterns using this feature. Now, let's say you absolutely love this design. What you can do is go back down to combine and you can click on merge layers. Essentially what you're doing is welding this all together. So if you go up to your layers panel, you'll see that everything's been merged and we don't have any of our six hearts listed below. So this is a permanent change just like weld. So if you were to save this right now, you wouldn't be able to go back and undo this. 
The only way to undo it right now is by pressing the undo button on the top left. So I think I would just prefer to keep all these layers. I don't think I'll be using the weld feature or the merge feature a whole lot because I really like saving my work and being able to adjust it later on. Now, if you think the layers panel is starting to look a little complicated, all you have to do is click on the down arrow and you won't be able to see those extra arrows. And if you wanna see all your hearts again, just click on that again. Now, if all of this sounds a little confusing and complicated to you, don't worry about it. You can still use Design Space the same way you always have. You don't even have to use any of these features. But when you have time, definitely go ahead and play around with these functions and you may find you actually like them quite a bit. If you have any questions or tips or something I may have missed, please leave a comment below and feel free to check out some of my other Design Space videos and I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.